Have you ever been on a Peranakan tour? No? Well, we're about to leave on one and you're invited. I'm Thomas Robson and this is Entree to Asia. Of all the terms and phrases used to describe Southeast Asian food, perhaps Nonya cuisine is one of the most esoteric. Where does it come from and what's it all about? How does it compare to Thai or Malay cookery? Well, a Nonya is a woman of the Peranakan culture, a fusion of Malay, Chinese and Indian families that was born into the coastal settlements around Malaysia and Singapore beginning hundreds of years ago. Hours of careful work go into the preparation of this aristocratic family cuisine but people no longer have the time or the big extended family homes that make this complex cuisine possible. We are about to meet an individual who has made the study of this culture her specialty and who is about to lead us on a Peranakan market tour. Wow. So we've got everything we need now. Yes, everything we need. What a great trip. What are we going to make again? We are going to do the apum burkua. I can't wait to find out what that's yes, come, about. Let's go to the kitchen. All right, let's go. Okay, I'm going to um, actually show you how I'm going to do the apum burkua, okay. which is actually a very traditional pranakan dessert, and it's no, but nobody's actually doing that anymore. Wow! Uh, it's something that only the older generations are actually doing. Uh -huh. right? And to do that, we actually need about 300 grams of rice flour. This isn't any ordinary rice flour. No, though, this is it? rice flour is is from Thailand, okay. and I specify Thai rice flour because it's high in starch. Okay, then we need some coconut milk here, mm -hmm. thick coconut milk. Okay, so this is like from basically almost the first or second extraction of it's, ground coconut. It's the first extract. First extraction, so the very richest, thickest part of the coconut, coconut. cream. And now uh, one tablespoon of sugar, half teaspoon of salt. Ordinary salt. One teaspoon of instant yeast. Now at home you might want to look at the fast rising yeast, which has become really popular. And uh, that's yeast you don't have to proof. And just as Devagi has done here, it's stirred right into the batter. And uh, that's all it takes, no proofing. That's right. And um, so I'll add in this 570 ml of thick coconut milk. So we're looking at uh, about two and three quarter cups. No, two and a half cups almost. About two and a half cups. Two and a half cups yeah. of coconut milk. And um, I just blend this until it's um, there's no more lump. And then I'll have to leave this aside to ferment, actually. OK, for the sauce. I actually um, have about 200 grams of palm sugar here. Okay, may I which see is, that? Yeah, sure. Wow. Okay, and, and how is this made? Okay, palm sugar is actually the sap from the coconut flour. The sap is brought you mean down. On the top of the tree? That's right, right at the top. Okay. And the sap is brought down and then they are just boiled for about three to mm. ten hours sometimes. Okay. And then you get these blocks of sugar. They, they come in blocks because when the, the sugar is boiled, they are poured into these little, little molds. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. And mm. in order to get a good gula malacca, or when I say gula malacca, it actually means sugar from Malacca. Malacca is actually a state in Malaysia okay. where most of the pranakans come from. Right. Okay, in order to find out whether this is really good, you should just like crumble it between your fingers. If it crumbles, then it's good quality. Yeah, try. Yeah, sure. Okay, so. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, so it doesn't really crumble under the finger. That's right. But yet it gives away, and crumbling may not be quite the right word. It kind of will come into a paste in oh, your okay, hand right, right away. But I'm going to taste this. What it reminds me of is heavily reduced maple syrup, but I mean the maple tone isn't there. But that kind of richness, that kind of flavor is That's there. That's right. So I have about 200 grams to 250 grams here, and I'll okay. add in some water. And um, if you look here, I actually have uh, pandan leaves. Like right over here? That's right. Okay, pandan leaves are also known as crupine leaves. They are used in a lot of Malaysian cooking to actually flavor the dishes. Mm -hmm. It could be a sweet dish or it's a savory dish. Normally what we do is we take that out from here. We wash in between here. Okay, I see. It's not very dirty here. at all. That's right. And once it's washed, we'll tie mm -hmm. it up into a knot. The reason why we tie this up into a knot is so that once it's boiled, we can just take this out and discard Instead that Instead of away. having a yeah. bunch of leaves spread throughout. That's right. Back at home, uh, if you find a Vietnamese market, uh, 
or other Southeast Asian market, odds are on you will find pandan leaf just like this. And one way perhaps to uh, identify it, don't be shy to do this in the store, is it's got a particular it. smell. Some people call it screw pine. That's amazing. In Thailand, they call it bai toy, but we'll just call it pandan leaf. That's the way it's most commonly known. That's right. The pandan leaf. Pandan. Earlier, you were working with some here, and you made this little item out of yeah, the pandan leaf. Yeah, that's right. Leaf. This is actually a brush made with pandan leaves. Uh -huh. like I always like to get the maximum use out of a pandan leaf. So what I've done is I just tie up some pandan leaves, cut, use a fork, and then just tear the leaves. And just with a fork, not a knife? No, just Amazing. a fork. Amazing. Okay. That's right. Easier. And then um, I just tie a band here. Now, if I use this to grease any pen, the, the, the fragrance from this will be imparted into the pen. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you fry, for example, I'm going to do the pancake later on. So the pancake is going to carry the aroma of the pandan leaves. Okay, very, very nice. What if you were grilling uh, something over a fire? Um, very good. You could then yes, swab on. That's right. I guess you'd want to stick to chicken or fish for a light so the flavor can flavor, come through. Yes, that's right. So there you are, another way of basting when you're cooking. Uh, at the barbecue, amazing. Yes. You can really smell the aroma that, there. Um, actually, I would actually cut the pandan leaves into small pieces mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. chuck it into a barbecue pit. For the smoke? That's right. At the beginning or at the end? In the beginning. You can get all your neighbors coming into your place soon. Well, of course, that's our goal, isn't it? You know, The more people knocking at the door, uh, the more famous we become at home. Eh? It's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. The reputation will grow. Okay, I'll turn on the stove. And we will boil this mm -hmm. till the sugar dissolves. And then I would have to strain this because the palm sugar sometimes carries dirt because uh, traditionally this is done in the garden. Right. Right. And then you have all these leaves flying in when they are doing it. So it's best that you strain the syrup after it's boiled. Okay. Okay. And then we will do the sauce. How much is in there exactly of the This is maraca? about uh, 200 grams here. Perfect. Yeah. And about five. Mm -hmm. Uh, pandan leaves or screw pine leaves. Does and it have to be really precise though? It depends on the individual taste actually. Okay. I mean like um, how sweet you want this to be or... And while that is boiling we can mm -hmm. prepare. Now here we have bananas mm -hmm. and um, these are very sweet bananas. I noticed they're shorter. Yeah, this Look at these big long bananas. You can use the big long ones or sure. the short ones, but um, I prefer this. And um, we cut that into small pieces. Now, if you don't have bananas, you can always use um, any fruit as long as it's not an acidic fruit. That means you can't use apple or pineapple, but okay. um, you can use things like um, a papaya or papaya? honeydew melon. melon. What about um, peaches? Would they be too acidic? Yes, uh, peaches are not advisable. Yeah. Okay, so no berries? No. I would say use more uh, Asian taste fruit. taste one of these just to see. I mean, it, aside from it being a little bit more yellow, it looks just like a regular banana. Mm. But, I mean, these must be almost just perfectly ripe, but all the same, the sweetness there is not as sticky sweet as a banana we might be more familiar with. But let's not say you have to have this banana. Again, we can work with what we have on hand. Yes, let's... that's right. The sugar has dissolved already. Okay, that was So very I'm quick. going to um, strain it. Smells of the market, you know, got the appetite going. It's uh, definitely time to uh, enjoy something with a homemade taste. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got about 200 ml of thin coconut milk here. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to add that in. Now, thin coconut milk, if you leave it to sit for a while, and what we're talking about is sort of the portion remaining after you scoop off the thickest part, leave it sit, you'll notice a little cream rises to the top. If you stir the top or disturb it at all, you'll see right away the liquid That's almost right. clear beneath it. And um, I add in the bananas. I've got some um, cornstarch, mm -hmm. as you would say. A little bit of water to mix this. It doesn't take much, but if you carefully and slowly stir the, uh, you know, when you start adding the water initially, the cornstarch can be resistant. Then all of a sudden, it blends smoothly. Yes, right. Nice chunks of bananas. Shall I start doing the pancake now? Sure, yeah. You've, you've already got some batter ready, is that right? Yes, that's right. Here we are. Now look. This batter is ready, and you can see it's, it's very foamy. The bubbles 
Okay, mm -hmm. so that would be sort of like the guideline then when it's ready to uh, begin working with, right? That's right. So I have a non-stick pan here. Mm -hmm. I'll turn on the stove. Now, the appam is actually very Indian, actually. Okay. And um, the pranakans, the the uh, Chinese, the marriage between the Chinese and the the Malays have actually used this basic Indian recipe to incorporate with the kua. The kua is the sauce. Okay. And so because the Indians don't eat the appam with the sauce, they would eat it with a curry. Okay. All and, right. Uh, and the pranakans have uh, made this sauce to eat with that appam. I see. Right. Now this is, has come to the boil. Here's a great I'll example of what we're I'll calling fusion. I'll add a bit of cornstarch. Okay, let's, let's, let's take a this. close look at this. Just a bit at a time to see what it's going to That's do, right? right? You don't want to over thicken. So it starts to take on the color and the, the luster of a nice caramel sauce. I'll just Make brush pancakes. this with a bit of oil. Mm -hmm. Can you smell the pandan smell? And Instantly, the minute you did that. I'm going to cover this. Wow, okay. You're only going to cook that on one side. Now, Apom, what, uh, what dialect would that be or what language would that name be originally? Apom is Tamil. Okay. It's Tamil. Tamil is the language of the in, the Indians, mm -hmm. the South Indians. Actually. Southern India, That's yes. That's right. And kua is actually mm -hmm. a Malay word for a sauce. So when we call this apom berkua, berkua. yeah, it means apom with sauce. With the sauce. Yeah. So there you are, apom berkua. It's one word, but it means with with, with sauce. a sauce. That's right. In every typical traditional mm -hmm. Pranakan family, this is served during the weddings as well. Oh wow! Okay. It's something that they would serve to their wedding guest. Uh, just because it's great, or is there a significance they tie it's, it's into? It's because it it's one of the oldest um, dishes the Pranakans have, the traditional dish. Right. Because nowadays they have so many new, new, new age cooking. I would say new yes. age cooking. Yes. That uh, a lot of them have forgotten their traditional food, and traditional food comes here during the weddings. That's not much oil that you're using at a time. Non-stick pan, of course. Yeah. The reason why I keep uh, brushing it with oil mm -hmm. is not so much as because I want the oil. I want the pandan leaves to touch the pan so that it gives the bottom of this pancake the pandan flavor. Okay. But the oil at the same time is going to trap some of that pandan, right. the volatile oils oil. that transmit the flavor. You want to try some? Oh, really? Already? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. This is a bit hot, so if I fumble, please uh, remember I'm eager. It's very light and delicate. You might want to knife and fork this at home, but... A bite of the pancake first confirms that this is an amazingly light dream of a food. And then rudely I go right into the pan here. And again, I don't think it's good. I gotta try again. That's, a, that's an old joke. Okay. <laughs> But I think at this point, my face probably describes a great deal of The sauce how good should actually is. be poured on this so mm -hmm. that the sauce gets trapped in the little holes here. It'll really change the texture yeah, of the dish right. at that point. That's right. It becomes Remarkable. spongy. Well, let's, let's play, uh, play saucier here. Nap a little bit. We'll get an idea of maybe how we might want to present this. Perhaps I think this might be more of a, an issue of ladling the stuff on and making it really soak, or yeah. would you go quite light? Oh, that's all right. Just okay, like that? Right. Yeah. Devagi Shamagan, yeah. thank you so much for bringing us here to the Epicurean Kitchen. I mean, a what a treat. We're here in your home. This morning we were in the market. That was amazing. Yeah. And uh, Apam Bakua, did I say that right? That's right. Fantastic. I got the pronunciation down. That is truly amazing. Uh, Indian pancake, Malay sauce, fusion cooking the way it really is. This is about cultures meeting, culinary traditions, families above all. Amazing. Right. Thank you so much. Welcome. So what Devagi taught us really was that fusion is about two cultures and two families coming together and meeting at the dinner table. It's all about how they make their food taste good for everybody. 
It's been going on for a long time, and it does not belong to chefs with big hats and all kinds of famous reputations. We can practice fusion cuisine as well. So let's have a look at a little inspiration, perhaps, to make our own fusion meal. Today I thought we'd make some lovely salmon, nice Pacific Northwest salmon. We'd cook it plainly and then serve it with a delicious seasoned fragrant rice that'll bring it all together with a fusion twist. To start off with our rice, well, we should make a little kind of a dressing or a seasoning for that. And to do that, we'll go back to Southeast Asian roots. I'm gonna take some lime juice, about a tablespoonful, and about two tablespoons full of fish sauce. And then some sugar. We'll need about two teaspoons of ordinary white sugar. And there we go. We'll mix it together. And what I'd like you to do is taste it as you go along. Mix it up, have a taste, and then adjust for sweetness or saltiness, adding more sugar, more fish sauce, or more lime juice, just to see when it tastes right to you. A little bit more sugar for me. When it tastes right for you, what you've done is you've added your own touch. You've made your own decision on how it should taste. Now, if that tastes good to your family, well, right away, you've got the knack of good cooking. Perfect, so that's a nice little dressing. Now, to bring it all together, we're going to need some green onion, which has been nicely chopped into on the angle so that it'll show nicely when we mix it with the rice. And also a nice assortment of colored sweet peppers. Whatever you find at the market will do beautifully. We have yellow, green, pink, and some other colors in there as well. A little bit of fresh coriander leaf, and all we've done is we've just plucked the leaf off the sprigs so we've got nice whole leaves and they'll really show up beautifully when we mix this all together with rice. Now, right in front of me, I have a bowl of white powder and what this is, is coconut cream powder. It's an ingredient that's becoming more and more popular, but it really hasn't been explored and put to its full use yet. There's some great things you can do with this. Of course, you can mix it with water and make lovely coconut milk. But today, we're gonna to take the powder and fold it into the rice without any liquid and it'll give an amazing concentrated coconut flavor to the rice that'll be very, very hard to beat. Then we'll add in some chili flakes to give a nice hot edge and also to bring the color up. So there you are, we have everything so we can put it all together. Day three. Even though we're early into our production schedule here in Southeast Asia, I can't think of a better way to delve into the flavors and fragrances of Singapore. The Epicurean Kitchen of Devagi Sanmugam. Devagi is both a world-renowned chef and a much sought-after Asian food historian. This Epicurean Kitchen is actually her personal kitchen in her home located in the suburbs of Singapore. Here she not only cooks for her family and friends, but conducts regular cooking classes for curious neighbors and budding gastronomes alike. While our cameraman prepares, this budding gastronome is about ready for his first lesson. All right, now, I've changed things a little bit in front of me here. I've organized, ready for my final step. And the first thing up is we're going to get our salmon cooking. I've got some beautiful thin escalope of salmon, little thin slices of salmon that'll cook very quickly. Into the pan they go, non-stick skillet, and we'll just arrange a few around here. And they won't take a moment but to cook on both sides. There we go, a nice pan full of salmon. Now, in front of me, I have a bowl of freshly cooked rice that I made with this rice cooker. If you like to eat a lot of rice, if you're cooking a lot of rice already and you don't have one of these, I gotta tell you, a rice cooker is a fantastic investment. Fresh rice, perfect every time, it's hard to beat. So we're gonna take this rice while it's still warm, and then we're gonna use some of this coconut milk or coconut cream powder as it's sometimes called, and we're just gonna shake some, scatter it over the rice, and then gently fold it in. We don't wanna make mushy rice out of this. So we'll just move it around like this, carefully folding. 
once around and then we'll add a little bit more. All in all, about three tablespoons for four cups of cooked rice should be plenty to give a really nice, rich coconut milk flavor. We'll stir that in and then we're going to add the minced green pepper and some of these lovely chopped up sweet peppers here. Did I call this green pepper? It's green onion. And there we go. We just want to give this a nice look. Toss this all together. Our salmon is coming along perfectly. And then what we're going to do, let's break up that little lump there, perfect. We're going to take some of this dressing that we made with the sugar, lime juice and fish sauce and we're just going to drizzle some, this spoon certainly won't work for that job, we're going to drizzle some into the rice. We don't want to wet the rice too much. Let's try that, just a tablespoon and a half at that point. We just want to give the rice a nice fresh flavor. We'll let this soak in for a minute while we flip over the salmon steaks. These are coming along nice. I shouldn't call them steaks. They're little salmon scallops. Lovely bronzed color. That's very nice. Do these over the barbecue. They'll be delicious. There we are. Let's grab that thin one there. This one too. We'll let these finish cooking. There we are. Let's have a look at the rice. Does it seem to be wet and shiny? Hmm. Let's add just a dash more of the dressing. It's not getting too sticky. We want to avoid that stickiness. And that looks just about perfect. And you can, you can really smell the aroma of the coconut and the lime juice, everything coming together perfectly. To give this dish a wonderful little bite, we're going to take some chili flakes, sprinkle some through, and of course these bright, bright red ones are going to give a lovely color to the dish as well. Oh, I've got to put in more. I like it spicy. You can hold back if you want to. And then some nice whole coriander leaves. We'll scatter some in now. We'll give the dish a little stir, and then we'll put some more in at the last minute. And I want to see the color of the chili flakes in the rice. And here it comes now. All right. The last few bits of coriander leaf on top. The deal here is to work gently and lightly so that the rice remains fluffy and not compact and mushy. You want, it to, you want to prevent that from happening. Our salmon is now cooked. Our fragrant rice here is ready. And I thought this would be a great dish for a simple supper or even better, a nice picnic lunch. I have a Thai picnic box right here. And this kind of pottery was very, very popular with the Peranakans who loved things that were beautifully decorated. The more ornamented, the better. This is just a good example of what would really excite a Peranakan chef. We'll take this. We'll move our coconut cream powder out of the way. We'll put the rice inside. It's just perfect and lovely here. A nice portion of the rice. Why not steal a few coriander leaves to lay on top, just like that. And then the salmon. Now let's see if we can arrange this really beautifully here. One nice piece, like that. Perfect. Rescue our garnish there. Another nice piece, like this. And here's a beauty right here in the middle. Wonderful. Another little touch of chili powder right in the middle. Beautiful. And there's a lovely light lunch or a simple dinner, a nice fusion dish bringing together wonderful Pacific Northwest salmon and a lovely fragrant rice with all the aromas of Southeast Asia.
Whenever I eat in Southeast Asia, it always seems the best dishes are the product of fusion, two cultures coming together to make the best dishes. This is something we can practice at home too because fusion is not new. I encourage you to try these fusion recipes and we'll have more great inspiration next time on Entree to Asia. I'm Thomas Robson. To find out more about Entree to Asia, including recipes and program descriptions, visit our website at www.entretoasia.com.